Hello. I don't have an opener. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of neck deep, uh, literally, in uh, the final construction phases of the studio. Uh, as it turns out, we now have a bit of a deadline we have to hit. And as a result, I've been kind of issuing uh, recording in and focusing on getting some stuff done. I was a little afraid might happen right now. I have a big episode coming with a lot of changes and a lot of really cool stuff that I think you're going to enjoy. Uh, but I'm not done with that one yet. I'm kind of in the middle of it right now. Um, so instead, I'm, I'm going to pull something out of the archives about a year ago for people at uh, KTAH Radio Tacoma and for people at this radio station, KTQA. I recorded a video about how Caroline, my automation system, works. Now, the only station still using Caroline is KTQA, um, but it's of interest. It's, it's an interesting thing, and uh, it explains a little bit of my thinking about how I think automation might work on the back end. I mean, I was eventually going to post it here anyway, but now is a really opportune moment to do so while I wrap this stuff up uh, and, and get a, a video about all this and more to you. Um, so yeah, let's go to that. So it's 2016 or 2017. And um, Radio Tacoma has just started, and they want to start transmitting, and they've got everything in place, but they uh, they don't have a way to play audio. Uh, there's no open source radio automation system, so I had to write one right away. So I did, uh, and I've been working on it a little bit on and off for a few years, um, but I'm a little embarrassed by it because I wrote it in PHP. Uh, here's the the loader for it. It's all PHP, and um, it, uh, which is a web programming language. I mean, WordPress is written in PHP. It, it's not what it's for. But ever since PHP 7 came out and, like, PHP got really good, strong typing, it's a fairly decent prototyping language when you don't want to screw around with uh, a lot of weird stuff. So I've basically been using the PHP version to run the, run the, uh, the radio stations, and then eventually I've, I've already started rewriting it in Rust. And it's going to be written in Rust. But it's going to kind of work the same way, except for a couple of places. So a little bit of terminology before we get started. Uh, Caroline, since I did this from the top down to sort of function differently from most... Uh, to be a little bit more straightforward from a, a back-end perspective than a pretty interface and stuff like that, um, it works a little bit differently than most automation systems, and so it has its own terminology, which you'll see, in, and you'll get why it is the way it is in a minute. Um, so the basic unit of Caroline is the, the media object, or, the, or, or I usually think of it as the file. It's a file, it's metadata about the file, like how long it is, artist, title, that sort of thing. That's the basic object. Uh, of, of play out in Caroline. So just like in iTunes or something like that, one line, you know, like one line in iTunes, that's the, that's the file. But it could also be called media? Yeah, in the code it's called media. Okay. But in my head I think of it as file. Uh, a collection is a group of media. Um, and you'll see why this is, this is the way it is because of the way new audio is uploaded to the radio stations, and you'll see why this is in a minute. Um, this was in, a, in order to get things to work quickly and to let non-technical people upload new content. I had to do this in a strange way. The new version is going gonna, is gonna to handle this a little bit differently. There's still going to be media and collection, but it's going to be all handled in the back end, and people won't see very much of this. So a selector is the core, is the bit that actually selects files to play out. Um... It's, uh, it's the code that goes through the, the library of, of media and says, okay, I'm going to play this, or I'm going to play that. And there's three kinds of selectors. There's single, which plays a single piece of media. There's fill, which, plays, uh, which fills the allotted space with media. And then there's file, which just plays one specific file. It's a special case. We're not using it anywhere, but like... If you wanted to play a specific ID at like the beginning of every day, 
the file selector is for that. Now the selector method is how a selector chooses to play media. It you know how how it managed, how it goes through the library and picks what what to play. And there's five ways to do that. One is random, which is completely random. It just selects things at random and plays them out. There's fresh, which is random, but it favors things that haven't been played recently. So like if there's two files, one that was played four hours ago and one that was played two weeks ago, it's going to favor the one that was played two weeks ago. Uh, obscure, which is random, but hasn't been played recently or hasn't been played very much. So if it hasn't been played in a couple weeks, um, but has a hundred plays, that that it might not select that to one that was played yesterday, but it's only been played twice. Okay, so obscure is about frequency and recency. Yeah, where fresh fresh is only in time. Obscure is about time and number of plays. And fresh. Get some keeps the playlist fresh. It's not that it takes a fresh thing that was just uploaded. It's something from longer ago. That's kind of how it fits. Okay. Um, so most recent, that's only available for the single file, uh, for the single selector, and just plays whatever was most recently uploaded. So, uh, you know, whatever the most recent file in that collection is. And then episodic is something I just finished up in the PHP version, and... So when it scans through files, it either reads information from the metadata in the audio file or tries to generate an episode ID from the file name. And then every time it hits this selector, it'll select the next episode ID. So that way, like if you, so instead of having episode one, then episode five, then episode 30, then episode 300, then episode two, it'll do episode one, episode two, episode three at the same time every day, depending on how you schedule it. There are options to selectors as well. Uh, and there's four. So these are options that you feed to selectors. One is truncate. Will you, will you allow Caroline to play only a part of the file, basically? Okay, so if you've got a 30-minute slot, but only... Sorry, if you have an hour for a block, and you've got 30 seconds at the end that you haven't filled with anything, and the file it selects is a minute long. Can I cut it in half and just insert it into the playlist, or do I have to go find something that's 30 seconds long? Gotcha. Um, there's disperse, which is a selector by default picks a play, uh, picks a file, puts it at the bottom of the list. Picks another file, puts it at the bottom of the list. Disperse inserts files randomly into the playlist. Okay. Uh, duration is how much time the selector has available to choose media. And then age is how far back can I search? So can I go back to 2018 stuff? Can I go back to 2018? Yeah, exactly. Um, now a block is a group of selectors. It, it is literally just a container that has selectors in it, and then uh, you have to name it. You have to give it an ID, and then you have to give it a duration if you're going to use it for scheduling. There's a there's a case where if, where blocks can contain other blocks. And if the block is inside of a block, uh, an internal block doesn't have a, need to have a duration, but a block that's picked by the schedule does. Okay. Um, so block here really does not necessarily refer to, or in any way refer to, a time block, a block of time. Um, blocks, so that goes into the, ne the, the next thing, which is the schedule, which is associating blocks with times. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so that, that's how that works. Uh, a fallback block is the only block that must exist in a configuration. Um, and that's what to play when there's nothing scheduled. Ta-da. And a playlist is like the penultimate data structure. It is, so Caroline takes a block, processes the block, generates a playlist, and that playlist is what is played. A playlist is a list of actual media. Okay. So, um, so that's what that is. Um, so most of this information is designed the way it is because I decided to configure the schedule for Caroline um, using uh, an XML file. 
So that determines sort of this hierarchical structure that we have here. But the first problem I had to solve was how people who are not technical and don't understand Unix or the internet can't use SCP, can't use FTP, how they were going to be able to get content into, uh, into Caroline. And so rather than reinvent the wheel, I just decided to take Nextcloud. So here is the, the Caroline library for KTQA. And there are, direct, there are directories here, like here are IDs, here's a full ID, uh, here's a very old one. We've heard this a million times. You are listening to KTQA. And then, uh, you know, over here is music. Um, over here is, like, here's the daily briefings. And, uh... Will episodic work on those kinds of things because they go up in... Yeah, in episodic will work on that, yeah. Um... <clears throat> But we're using the most recent selector, which you'll see in a minute. So we have this Caroline library, which is just filled with, with media. So this exists on our co-located server, and then that's rsynced to the transmitter every hour. What is R? It's a method. rsync is a, is a program that uh, basically makes sure that two directories are the same. Okay. It, it synchronizes directories things. across you know, on a computer, across computers, stuff like that. It's just a synchronization program. Um, fairly common in, in the Unix world. So, and then, so this is what it looks like from the web. The neat thing about using uh, Nextcloud is that I can get it from just, uh, from just inside of uh, my file manager. So I don't need to log in or anything like that. I can just copy and paste daily briefing straight into the file manager here, which makes it really easy to use for uploading new content. But other folks would need to log in too. Right, and that's what the web the website is for. It, okay. it just it's a web dev it's a web dev front end to a group of files that then are synchronized to the transmitter. And then inside the transmitter this is the main configuration file for uh, for Merker, which is uh, my test bed for um, for developing Caroline. It's that little box over there. Okay. Um, so here are the basic settings, where the file is, where the temp directory is, the name of the station, database connection, how to use rsync. Um, and then here's the important part here, is these two sections here, which is collections and metadata. So we give, under collections, we give it a name, and then we point to a place in um, in the library where those files exist, and it's very basic. It's just it's it's a simple pattern matching system. So for Black Museum, it's going to look in OTR Black Museum, and then these episodes are uh, these files are all under Black Museum. Um, so I've got Epsho here, uh, which you're not going to see because Epsho is over on Merker, but um, all the things that are in shows, Ask an Atheist, da 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 da, da uh, that's going to be under the AAA tag. Everything under Hand Street Football is going to be under the Hand Street Football tag. Because I, I associate these pattern matches, these pattern matches with these collections. And then, as you can see, all is just match anything. IDs is match any ID. OTR is match anything under the OTR directory. So, Media can exist in multiple collections. It's like being tagged with multiple things. Yeah. Okay. Like, it, it's like uh, categories in WordPress. A post can exist in multiple categories. Media can exist in multiple collections. So that's, and then down here we have metadata. And this is special. Any collection which is under musical gets scanned for musical stuff like... Uh, uh, genre, beats per minute, things like that. I am doing that processing, but I'm doing nothing with the data right now because I decided to drop um, Musical Selector before I moved to Rust. Episodic are collections that are expected to have episodic data within them. So Ask an Atheist, Hands Free Football, Radio vs. the Martians, and then Episode Show. Okay. So uh, with that in mind, we are now going to build a schedule.
All right. Let me pull up Vim over here. So you know what XML is, right? It's basically a superset of HTML. It looks like HTML, but tags can be anything and you can define them. So the station, the parent tag is station. It's like the HTML tag in um, It's like this. It's like the HTML tag in an HTML file. So this is a station file, mm -hmm. and so the ID is. I usually put the station call sign in the version of the of the uh, of the schedule in here. That's just for useful. That's just for your use. Um, Merker actually tracks the name of the of the XML file. I might switch that off later on because I added ID later. But uh, that's that's the way it is right now. Okay. So first things first. Um, so we can create some blocks. So I'm going to create a block called top of the hour or top of hour, and I'm not going to give it a duration. And you'll see why in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to need is uh, I'm going to want it to pick a single. I'm going to want it to select a single file, and I'm going to do it random, totally randomly. I want it to be let's say up to 60 seconds in length, and um, I want it to be in the, let's see here, do we have a full ID collection? No, we don't. So I'll just have it be in the IDs. Yeah. Of the, a single file of the random method up to 60 seconds in length from, collect, from the IDs collection. Okay. So because it's a single file, if it selects a, a 30 second file, you're going to have 30 seconds left after that. So up to 60 seconds and nothing else because it's the single file. Right, because I'm, so, I'm selecting a single one. Okay. And now, next, I'll do a fill of type obscure duration. We'll also do a, a minute. And we'll do, a, we'll do the Camp Quest Northwest ads. So now it's going to fill 60 seconds of time with Camp Quest Northwest ads. After the... After, after the ID. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm done. That ensures that we've ID'd at the top of the hour. Well, it, it doesn't do anything yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> you'll see that. You, you, you'll see this, this is... We're setting up a lot of things in advance here. Now I'm going to create another block called bottom of our. And this gets a, this is a little bit more, uh, more in depth. So we'll do a fill type, uh, of type of method obscure. And uh, let's see. Now here, so notice that we've made collections an attribute here. If you're only doing a single collection, you can make it an attribute inside of the tag. If you want to select multiple collections, you can make them select uh, subtags. Okay. So old time radio, music. So we'll have old time radio available. We'll select any music that's available. Um, and uh, we'll do Camp Quest Northwest ads. But this might cut them off. Nope. No? No, not yet. And uh, that's it. And then after that, we're going to do another fill of type obscure. But this time, we're going to do truncate guess and disperse, yes. Can you remind me what disperse was again? 
instead of just appending it to the bottom of the uh, of, of the playlist, it will insert it in random places and it'll disperse the playlist, right, the okay. selected media throughout the playlist. And here we'll do collection filler because you'll notice that I have got a filler category here. And this is just random. It's production music and random noises. So what this is going to do is it will select music, ads, and old time radio in complete files. And then, maybe if I spell that right, it'll work right. Uh, and then it will select filler to fill any remaining time, even if it has to cut files to fit the time, and it will insert them anywhere in the playlist. Because what would happen if I didn't have Disperse Yes is at the bottom of every hour, you're going to have these little fragmented files. <laughs> like, beep, boop, 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 boop. And, and so with this, it just inserts them anywhere in the playlist, and it makes it sound a little bit more natural. Okay. So we haven't actually made a scheduling block yet. We've created a couple blocks, but the, notice these blocks have no durations. So, uh, we've just named them. We've just named them. So they can't be used to schedule content on the station. Now, we're going to do that for the first time. We'll call this AAA new. And we'll call it, and we'll make it 3,600 seconds long, which is an hour. So, top of hour. Single type equals most recent collection equals AAA and then block ID bottom of hour. Okay, so AAA new. First thing it's going to do is go to the top of the hour block. So it's going to select one random ID up to 60 seconds in length. Then it's going to fill 60 seconds with Camp Quest Northwest ads. Then it will play the most recent file from Ask an Atheist. And if there's any time when that's a... Now, in single, if you run... If you go over 3,600 seconds uh, with the single... Cut. It is just cut. This is why I tell people you have this many... Your programming block on, on KTQA is this long, because blah. And then bottom of out, and then if there's any time at the end, it will try to fill in old-time radio, full episodes of old-time radio, full songs, and full ads. And then if it can't do any of that, or if there's any space left over after it does it, it'll jam filler into the gaps. Okay. 3,600 con 3, seconds of content. Now, we'll do AAA back for a duration of 3,600 seconds. They don't have to be 3,600 seconds long, but because we have to op uh, ID at the top of the hour and stuff, it just really it helps us to break it into 3,600 seconds. Right now, I'm testing episodic content with blocks of 60 seconds in length, and it's working fine. Single. Oh, no. Sorry. Block ID equals top of hour single type equals episodic collection equals AAA age equals one year ago. Block Up to one year ago or starting one year ago? Starting one year ago. And now we've made, now we've made back episodes of Ask an Atheist. And it will increment the, through the episodic list. And it will only use episodes that start from one year ago. Okay. So, like right now on Merker, there's Ask an Atheist episodes that go back two years. It won't use the episodes older than a year ago. Um... Now remember, now if I were to feed this, now this is, we're far from done here. Now you would do this, you would create for every show you've got, you know, maybe a new episode and then maybe back episodes or something like that. 
Um, and then you're done. But we haven't created the fallback block yet. All right. And the you, everything has to have a fallback. Every configuration file has to have a, a fallback block. So block ID um, fallback, of course. Duration 3600. Uh, let's do 1800 seconds. So every every configuration has to have a fallback block, but the fallback block can be in any length. Uh, any block can be of any length. Okay. So block ID top of our and of course block ID bottom of our fill ID. I oh know. Type random. We'll fill it with. Doesn't matter from what collection. Oh, okay. Shows. Shows and OTR and there we go. That's what's necessary for creating a. Um, we've created a radio schedule. We've created blocks of programming. We've put blocks of programming inside of other blocks of programming. Now we have to schedule it. And I usually put this at the top. So we create the schedule. If you don't have this tag, it will just play fallback every time. So I'll, I will place the a back episodes block at 1500 hours every day however we'll place the new Yeah, day zero or day seven is Sunday. Both. It's like aces. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because so some people count by zero, some people count by one. So zero or seven both equal Sunday. But Monday is definitely one. Monday is definitely one. Okay. Um, so what this means is every day at, at uh, 1,500 hours, it will play the back episodes of Ask an Atheist. Unless it's Sunday, then it'll place the, play the most recent episode of Ask an Atheist. Notice we've only scheduled one hour. Yes. Well, if we're outside of that one hour, it'll use fallback. Oh, okay. All right, I still have a, a fallback question. Okay. Some stuff has become clearer. But down in fallback, can you go down to it? Mm -hmm. If instead of 1,800 seconds, I put two, would it just continue outside of that 3 p.m. hour playing this playing random two seconds of stuff yep just for two seconds oh no, no, no different thing. all right now i gotta generate a new playlist oh jeez yep. yeah okay. so so i'm gonna copy merker test to merker but now this is the oh crap what did i do so here's caroline um so we're going to use test playlist mode. So and test playlist mode is used to pre-generate playlists, and it's also used to test your your schedule to see if it works. So this is a good sign because it this just explains what it reads out of the schedule. Okay, so it's like a summary. Yeah, it's a summary. Um, see schedule definitions. Play block a back every day at five fifteen until sixteen when not overridden. Play block a new every day at fifteen. That needs to be fixed. Well, okay, fine. Um, I don't use this this function very often. Because uh, the news should be only on Sundays, right? Yeah. And then this gives you basically an output of what it does every day. Mm -hmm. 
So um, that doesn't work too well. This was the start of an idea of I could just feed it the XML file and it would generate an HTML file of the station schedule so that you could just include it in WordPress. That's something I'm still working on, but whatever. So, so we give it Uh, so we give it a time. Which is now? Yeah. So it's currently 10 to 7, or, or 10 to 6, so it created a 10-minute playlist of type fallback. See? A single ID, mm -hmm. uh, a single Camp Quest Northwest ad, some music, some shows, some more music, filler. It's a 15 second file, but this plus means it's only playing 1.3 seconds. And then two more shows. So hold on, there's one that says show, episode show, and it's only for less than a second. See, These are my test episodes. Okay. Um, it's the Shazbot file over and over again. <laughs> okay. It's just so that I can watch, I can watch the episode incrementer. But let's, for, for example, Let's say we're doing 1,500 on a Wednesday. Oh, right, wrong flag. So now it's playing a back episode of Ask an Atheist. Plays an ID, plays an ad, plays a 56 minute and 59 second Ask an Atheist. There's time at the end, so it plays a 10 second They Might Be Giant song. It plays three seconds of uh, of filler yeah, loops because remember it dispersed it throughout the uh, throughout throughout the playlist so you don't have like these little cut off bits at the end of an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, it plays something from the Clasmatics that's only two minutes long, and then it plays another th another song that's five point four seconds long because they might be giants has really you know Apollo eighteen has that whole fingertip section. <laughs> um, well, now, before, before where it said, uh, ask an atheist back when I select weekday zero. Okay. Now it says AA new. And now, where before, it was selecting the earliest epi episodic, season 36, episode 3, which was about a year ago. Now it's selecting season 36, episode 12, which is the most recent file it has. It's also only 27 minutes long for some reason. Um, so again, an ID, Camp Quest Northwest, the Ask an Atheist, then music, Elvis Costello, Philip Glass, whatever, Les Claypool, and there's no... Oh, here it is, and here's 2.4 seconds of filler. Because the filler's dispersed. Because the filler's dispersed. Okay. I'm excited when I understand things. <laughs> yeah. And so it shows you, it auto-generates a playlist ID so that we can go back in time and see what we played. This is the file it came from. This is the block ID. This is how long the playlist is. Number of files in the playlist. Here are the collections it used and how much time it spends in each collection. This is the created on, is when the playlist was created. Uh, up here, if the playlist had been started, it would tell you when it started playing the playlist. And so, let's turn on the radio. Uh, player, and then we select and we'll keep it in the foreground. It's the exact idea. You are listening to KG28LP, mm -hmm. 95.3 FM, a radio station in central Tacoma. We're just getting started and getting everything running. If you'd like some information, you can go to ktqa.org. If you'd like your content on this station, you can email us at info at ktqa.org. In fact, you can email us for anything you like. So this generally runs in the background without... 
without uh, without this display. So if you're on Caroline.i, it reads the information about Caroline. It reads the in, the information about Caroline and shows you what it's doing. Um, I'm working on a web front end instead of just a text front end. Uh, but I stopped working on that because we needed episodic stuff more recently. This is also how you can interact with it. Like... Maybe I want to skip this World Inferno song for because I'm, I have no taste. Now it's playing all the episode shows. Now it's generating a new playlist. There we go. Or I can force it to completely regenerate a playlist because this playlist offends me. Is this the only full ID you have? Uh, it's the only full ID I have on this. Okay. I'm working on changing that. Or I can just make it quit. Will it go to fallback? No, I told the program to exit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so if something was playing and you're like, oh no, I didn't realize this was in the the things, ah. Yeah, oh my god, this skip. is a horribly racist episode of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Skip. <laughs> and it just moves on. So that's how Caroline works. All right. Do you understand it now? Yes, I probably couldn't, like, generate a playlist right now by myself. Mm. Um, you know, with blocks and whatnot. Yeah. Without having a lot of the reference and stuff like that, but yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, the Rust version is going to have a web front end that will allow you up. It will allow you to upload files directly to it, and it will manage files in the background. So uploading files directly to it, as opposed to using uploading it to Nextcloud and then synchronizing it. Okay. So you just upload directly to it, and then when you upload it, you tell you you tell it what collections it belongs to. Okay. So it, it, it's a lot more it's a lot more straightforward. Um, and the Rust version probably won't use an XML file, but the, the data structure will exist in the database, but because I, who wants to write an XML file for it? Like, I like having the XML file. I, this is easy for me to bang out a schedule, and it allows me to visualize what the schedule is doing, I but... Mean, given that I know a tiny bit of HTML, yeah. right? like I've done HTML 15 years ago, that... I feel very comfortable looking at that. So part of me is thinking that I could make a, a, a graphical application that generates XML that is then fed to uh, the playout system. Or part of me is just says, just talk directly to the database and go from there. Hmm. Um, but you want to be able to have it so that a specific user wouldn't need to know how to type this. Yeah, I'm kind of okay with programming people having to know XML. I mean, skills development is part of what we're trying to do, but yeah, I think it, I, I would like to have a graphical configuration ability for people who need it. Mm -hmm. So. And by programmers, you mean people who program the radio station? The programming, com yeah, the, the, the content committee. The, the folks who figure out what shows air when. The, this is, like I said, I mean, I'm feel very comfortable and not anxious looking at that right now. And I like that the whatever you're using um, also color codes things. Oh, Vim. Yeah. Jeez, couldn't live without it. Okay, I think we're done. And that's that. So uh, since this is a quick one-off episode, I don't have the usual uh, end card for you. But I'd like to thank everybody who contributes to my Patreon to help me keep doing this and, uh, you know, buy parts for this and keep it going. Uh, that's it for this episode. In about a week or so, I should have an episode for you about the final construction of the, I guess what I would call basic functionality of the studio, which is, uh, the benchmark there is just the ability to be live from this place and do things like play music and talk into a microphone and whatnot. That should be the next episode. I'm really looking forward to it since it's the culmination of about seven months work. See you then.